Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Srini here and this is with my channel Selenium Automation and Java Learning with Srini. So if you are new to this particular channel and coming to see this video for the first time, I would advise you to just subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications. In this channel, I'll be creating videos on different technologies and automation concepts like Selenium, Java, Python and also I'll be having new series uploaded for API automation and RPA tool as well. So let's get started for today's session. So in the last lecture, we have seen two parts of exception handling. So we did mention in detail about what is exception and we had seen the different types of exception hierarchy. So if you haven't seen across my previous couple of videos, I would ask you all to just go over those and then come back to the session. So in today's session, we are going to continue with what are the different ways of doing the exception handling in Java. So we have seen what is checked exception, what is unchecked exception, but how do we handle those exceptions in Java? So those methods we are going to see in today's session. So the first method is called try catch block. So we are going to use a try block where we are going to put our code, which should be tested. If in case there is any exception encountered when the program does get executed, then that will be that exception will be caught by the catch block. That is the meaning of try catch block, right? And the second part is try catch and then finally means we want some set of statements to be executed no matter what, whether you get an exception or you don't get exception. There is some important portion of our code which you would want to keep it in the finally block. This will ensure that if some there is some like open connections or some memory uh, consumption is there that will be relieved, right? So that is what this particular finally block is used for. So let's get back in the practical part. So I've created a Java class here. I've, there is a main method. So let's get started. So let's just say now that we are going to put this all into a method. So, so far we have seen in the previous session that we were doing everything in the main. Now let's just do it in a method. So int a equal to 10 and int b equal to zero. So let's say we have a variable called div val. So we are going to do a div division operation. So div val equal to a by b. Okay. And let's say we make this particular method as static. So as you would be knowing static, we access this particular static keyword basically allows us to not create any object. It can be directly accessed by the class name. So we can just say m1. It need not be invoked to an object. So a static method of main can call the static m1 method. So if you run this particular program, we will be getting this exception at this particular line because we are trying to do division by zero, which is not allowed in Java and it will throw you arithmetic exception. So let's run this program. So here we go. We got the arithmetic exception with the message divide by zero. So we have to handle this exception. Otherwise our program will not be able to go ahead with the other statement. So let's say we had another statement here. So I just want to show you all what is this exception handling giving the value add. So let's say we had this reached end of M1 method. Okay. And let's have another couple of statements after we call M1. Let's say. So we'll just say reached end of main method. Don't need this. Yeah. So we just want to check that what happens if the exception is encountered. Does it execute these statements or not? That is what is the purpose of my this example. So let's rerun this program again. So did you see here? We haven't been able to see these two statements get printed because it got abruptly stopped at this particular portion because we encountered a arithmetic exception error. So if you try to handle this exception. What advantage it will give is that it will allow your program to continue further. It will of course throw you the exception and you can print the exception message also, but it will not stop your program from not getting executed further. So let's do that. So we are going to do exception handling using the first method, which is called try catch block. So what did we discuss? We are going to put the statements which you want to execute in a try block, which potentially might have some exception logically. And you're going to put this kind of a catch block. So 
So it's trying to match it, and then we want to close the method. Yeah, but this is just the try catch block. But what is the type of exception we might be expecting to encounter? So let's put that exception type here. So this is the exact exception type you're going to get. So this is just one statement we are having in a try block. You could have multiple statements in a try block leading to some different type of exception. But for simplicity, we are taking just one example of arithmetic exception, right? Yeah. So now let's run this program and let's see what is the output now. Now we are trying to handle the exception. So this is a try block where we put the statements and the catch block will catch the exception. So we are creating object of that exception type and then we are going to just mention here. So what we will do is we will have to put one more sys out here and we will say here arithmetic exception encounter. Right. And we're going to print the message as well. So we will just use this object now and just say e dot get message. Right. It's going to give us the exact message. Yeah, that's it. So let's run this program now. So if you see here the difference between the previous code and this code with try catch block, we did handle the exception, whatever we got, but that also allowed us to go ahead and execute the other statements which are pending in the program, like the ember method remaining statements, as well as that of the main method. So program did not get abruptly stopped. And also we got the message that something has gone wrong at this piece of the code because you've written this message and we can also give some meaningful message that in which particular method you've got this. So when we are having big project and framework, when we are working on that, we would be exactly being indicated that which particular line or method we are getting this exception. So that will be very much useful. So it's encountered in the M1 method. So this was first way of doing the exception handling using try catch. Now, what if, if we are having, let's say multiple exceptions. So let's say we are going to have here a array of integers, right? And let's just declare this way. We're going to instantiate the array this way. It's a one dimensional array. And I'm trying to access the fifth element of the array, which doesn't exist, suppose. Let's say I want to print it. So I know this element doesn't exist because the maximum size of the array is four and it will have zero, one, two, three. So always the array index starts on zero. So zero, one, two, three. So totally we can have only zero, one, two, three, four indexes present, but we are trying to access the fifth, sixth element, which is the fifth index. So it should be throwing an error. But here, what will happen? This will encounter the exception. It will try to go further. This exception also should be encountered. Now we should be handling this exception of array index out of bounds here. If we don't handle it, it is going to abruptly stop our program again. Let's run this program. Yeah. So what has happened now is that in this particular case, it has not given us any exception here. The reason is because here already exception is thrown and it is caught here. So already whenever you encounter the exception, the statements beyond this try block uh, beyond this particular statement will not be executed. So it went ahead and executed the other statements of this particular method and the main method. So we cannot have like five, six statements like this. Let's say we had one more example. Let's say we are having string str equal to null, right? It's like a null point exception we're trying to do. And let's say we are trying to print now str dot length. So we are trying to find out the length of a string, which is having a null value, right? So it's just not able to get it. Just a moment. Yeah, so length method. So we are trying to get the length of the string, but string itself is initialized with null values. So it's going to throw null pointer exception. So let's look at this carefully. What happens if we are having multiple exceptions here? What happens actually? So sequentially, if you see first, we are going to encounter arithmetic exception. Then we are going to encounter 
array index out of bound exception and then null pointer exception right these are the three exceptions we are going to encounter in this try block but if your first statement itself gives you the exception you are going to come to the catch block because you have caught the exception and you are going to go further executing the remaining statements of the method and then the main method because the control goes back to main method after the m1 method execution is over so it will print this particular statement so here if i comment out this particular statement it is going to give me this array index out of bound exception but i haven't yet caught the array index out of bound exception here so these two statements will also not be executed and it will abruptly stop my execution so let's look at that see this is what is happening it is giving an array index out of bound exception with the index 5 so we have to catch it as well so this is the second example i was talking about try and multiple catch box and mention the exception type so you are going to copy this particular line again and you are going to mention this exception type yeah so we have handled array index out of bound exception also now if you run the program we should be able to continue further see it got executed and the other two statements also got printed now let's say we were to get this third exception but we have not caught the exception as well so let's try to catch null pointer exception or if we don't do that let's run this program and see it throws null pointer exception because you are trying to do an operation on this variable which is having a null value so it cannot find the length on a null value so let's handle now null pointer exception this is the example of try and multiple catch block and we are going to just print that exception message let's run this program that's it so this is how we handle try catch and try multi catch so let's look at this diagram again so we have take, taken care of this try catch block and try multi catch block now what is this nested try catch block means within a try block you can have another try block so what that could mean is that within this try block okay i have this div well okay now i can have this another try block here which is having this particular statement but it is throwing an exception because you should be having a catch block to this try block so let's try to put a catch block and we have to give the message which particular exception we are trying to catch so let's try to cut paste here right so what i have done is that instead of having try and multi catch block i have just taken one part of the code that is one particular exception into another try block which is inside this outer try block so this is my outer try and this is my inner try so always a try block should be having a associated catch block if you don't have a catch block for your try block it will throw you exception as it showed me here so if i comment this particular portion it is going to give me an error it cannot exist stand alone see it doesn't exist stand alone it will expect you to handle either finally or a catch block so at least try with finally like this so we'll come to finally in a bit but just we are talking about this particular portion now either it should have a catch block or it should have a finally so this particular one if you see try catch try catch finally and we can have one more try finally these are the variations we can have we cannot have independent only try block that is not possible right so this try catch block is now this inner try block and this is the outer try block is getting closed so this is the example of nested try catch block right now let's look at the third type that is a try finally block so we can have one more st statement here and to this we can have finally and let's now move 
other exception here. So arithmetic we are going to handle outside, and now let's handle this array index out of bound exception here. And finally, we will just say here. So we are not handling the exception here. See, we are not catching any exception here. It is simply saying finally. That's it. We are not catching using the catch method. So it's not going to handle the exception. It is just going to execute what you want to execute after it is reached the finally block. It might be like closing some connections or something like that. But this is not handling the array index out of bound exception. Each end of for array index auto bounds so this is not exception handling because still the exception will be thrown it is not caught yet so whenever we get the exception we should be able to catch it something someone should be able to catch it so let me remove it here and instead of that let me comment it so that we can put this part again later so what you have done now we just have one outer try block and we have a catch block for arithmetic exception against it and inside that we have two try catch blocks one try catch and then one try finally this is not doing any exception handling okay so what we will do is we will just so what will happen now let's have a look it is going to execute this particular statement it will going to get arithmetic exception so let's just try to run this program and see See, it's going to get the arithmetic exception. It is not going to execute the other statements. If you want to execute the other statements, you should comment out, or you can just print put one more statement here. Just comment out the ones which is you no, know, which we don't want for now exception to be thrown because we want to test out this part. What happens in this scenario? So now we are not going to get any ex arithmetic exception either in null pointer exception. Now we should be getting the Array index out of bound exception. So let's run this program. Yeah. So let's look at what happened now. So it went inside this try block. It printed hello. Then it has finally done whatever was there on the finally block that is reached end of finally block for array index out of bound. It could not handle this exception because we don't have any catch clause. So it abruptly completed your execution of a program here itself and has not gone further in. Printing these two statements, so that is the purpose of the catch block. It is able to catch the exception and then finally give the user a meaningful message. So instead of that, what we can do now, we will see the next variety that is try catch and finally. So we are going to put this particular exception and we are going to catch it. We have already commented this particular part, so we will just copy this again. Yeah. So now we have try, catch, and finally. So we are handling the exception of array index out of bound, so it should be able to print these two statements also. Let's look at it. So here we go. So we have handled the array index out of bound exception, and it has continued the program execution further. So hope you found this session useful. And we have covered majority of the exception handling types: try catch, try catch finally, try finally, nested try catch block, try multi catch block. So we will see the other two types of exceptions: throws and throw new clause, and the custom exceptions. These three in our next session. So stay tuned and do subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet. Bye bye.